In this video, I'm going to share five tips for your next park build in the map of San Marie Bay. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's tips, tricks, and glitches video for Jurassic World Evolution 2, I'm going to go through the first of the many maps in Jurassic World Evolution 2 and share some tips to make your best parks possible and to inspire you in your future builds. And the map for today that we are going over is one of the multi DLC maps, that being the San Marie Bay map, which I figured is a good one to start with since it is one of the most controversial Universal map so far in the game and I thought it would be a good start with this new series and with that allow me to share five tips for your future builds in San Marie Bay. And the first tip that I want to give is that you should keep the natural lagoon. It is probably the biggest mistake that many of you are making with your parks because the moment that Frontier had decided to add the option to remove it, it kind of killed that park completely. I know that it's a source of frustration with this map due to the major sensitivity of the lagoon with buildings, but despite that, I still think it should be kept as it is the highlight of this map, being in the game after all. Because we already have two other maps that would be better suited for our desire to build in this kind of environment, with the other two being much bigger and more unique. And at least this provides an interesting challenge, which is why I say yes to the lagoon. I know, I know, it's gonna be very stressful in a a lot of cases but with these extra tips coming up I think that you'll reconsider the frustration and might find some new inspiration in this map. The next tip I want to add is about the land which will help people's stress levels with it and the hitboxes are on the lagoon and the borders of this map and it is to use the terrain around the lagoon as a natural habitat as I feel it is the best use of this space and this will allow much more flexibility in the area with it. With the amount of space available, you could do multiple zones in different environments. One section of it you could have as a terrestrial rock formation that can be for your flyers to roam around because they'll probably want to stick around it because it'll be easy places for them to land based on the game's coding. Maybe you want to have a barren desert environment on one side and maybe the other side could be a lush forested section or even an oasis sort of environment. Also for those who are wondering what to do with the lagoon buildings that are unfortunately stuck there, which is the only thing I would say is a real pain about this tip is if you want to still build something around them my recommendation is you could have them as little mini hubs maybe a guest building or two and a viewing vent and connect them with the hyperloop system and then you can use them for that or you could even just use the damage tool and place a bunch of trees around them to make them look overgrown and taken by nature which probably wouldn't work as best with the barren desert zone if you were to do that but you know it still would work just have it like layered with sand around it or something and at least this way these abandoned zones or small guest sections will at least give a purpose to those areas and won't just have them stand out there and have no purpose at least this time they'll have instead purpose the third tip I want to go over may be a bit of a surprise in fact when I was making the park that was specifically for this video's purpose I was surprised about this little tip myself, but the tip is to waste space, as despite it being one of the smallest maps, I think it is definitely one of the three smallest maps, if not maybe the smallest, but either way, it's still fine to waste space. After all, the first two tips here are literally taking half of your map space, but even then, the upper elevation of the map, I was able to waste the majority of space on a massive turtle art path, which, weirdly enough, I realized I hadn't done as much as I did in the first game, which is probably due to the way this game is so much more different. I also wasted space up there for the mini Malta exhibit that I had, also, I had a little turtle rock decoration section, 
and even a museum. But the point is that even in this tiny map, I was able to waste so much space, and yet my park is still a five-star park. And most importantly, I didn't need to worry about running out of space or the need to fill everything in with whatever fits because while that is sometimes an interesting challenge in itself to see what you can fit in it's more satisfying when it's done and you know that you didn't even have to use the whole map we're heading into the lagoon for this second last tip and to discuss the dino in the room or more accurately the marine creature in the room no this is not in fact a natural lagoon it's just a spill of the ocean and that there's no divide that would realistically prevent any of the marine species even the mosasaurus from being all I'm off to see the world and try them famous Disney ships. See y'all next time. Bye! <laughs> So this next tip is to sort of solve that problem, which is to build a story with this lagoon. Not really any actual building for this, but in a way if you're, say, a YouTuber like me and you need to make a story about your exhibits, here's an example. Here's, well, here's a few examples actually, and you can pretend that there's a reason that these marine creatures are here. A few examples could be like the Archelons are there to lay eggs on land, which then you can help decorate the land around them with a few fake nests, which I will do a tips video if you guys so request, which if you do, leave those requests in the comments for tips, tricks, and glitches, of course. Another is the idea of young and old dinosaurs, or in this case, marine reptiles, which there has been a lot of discussion about because we are probably not going to get any baby dinosaurs in this game for the life of us, but there is still the creative side of us, and we won't let that stop us. In this case, I would like to recommend using Attenboroughsaurus as adults and Plesiosaurus as the younger ones of the group, and that way you can have them be like a family of Attenboroughsaurus or Plesiosaurus, whichever one you want as the actual species, to basically be there to collect food, as this could be a little fishing area or an area where fish will come and go at certain times and seasons, like how the Orcolon would be doing, which also you could do that with any others, but this at least builds a little bit of a story and makes it a little bit more realistic than, you know, them just being like, oh no, we're trapped, there's no way we can get out of here, when the entire ocean's like, hey, come on, join us. And before we go on to the final tip, guys, I just want to encourage you folks to leave a like and to stomp on the subscribe button, maybe slash the bell icon to get notifications to join the hunt, and to remember that these tips are primarily to inspire you in your next builds and to find your own ideas and just have fun with it, which that's what matters most. But now with that little announcement there, guys, let's get on to the final tip for San Marie Bay in Jurassic World Evolution 2. The final tip I wish to share with this map is to have your guest zone on the upper levels connect with the aquatic theme. I made sure that while building the guest section of my park, apart from the tour ride, which in this case was basically the only way you could view any of those dinos or aquatic creatures down there, I also wanted to make sure that the theme of the park was going through just like it was down there using fires at the Natural Lagoon, of course, as I mentioned before, and semi-aquatic species in the upper level, such as the Spinosaurus section that I had, and also the Mini Malta section, which you could fill with literally any creatures you want. And I even had a little aviary as well, just to fill in a little bit of space, because, well, I figured, you know what, let's have some cage flyers, just in case they get a little nasty. And this little tip will help you c connect these sections of San Marie Bay without the worry of it feeling like two different parks in one. Which sometimes works, but in this case, because it's such a small map, you don't really want it to feel separate. So just using the theme that's at the bottom and matching it with the top will make it really work as a whole park. And those are 
the five tips that I am going to share with you guys for San Marie Bay. Now while this still will most likely be one of the most controversial maps in Jurassic World Evolution 2's map roster, I do hope that this video does inspire you to give this map a new chance or even might inspire you in your other park builds in the future. Thank you so much for watching folks, maybe liking, subscribing, stay safe out there, and remember that you are amazing, never forget that, and I'll see you next time. But until then, enjoy yourself.